Welcome to the Orca. Anecdotally, things in the real estate market in the Lower Mainland seem to be grinding to a halt, but anecdotes are one thing. Cold, hard numbers are often another. Rennie is perhaps the best known real estate marketing firm in BC. And Rennie is out with its 2019 Real Estate Outlook, which uses demographic shifts, migration, and other statistics to anticipate demand, and then municipal trends to track supply. In short, the region isn't building enough of the right kind of homes. And to talk more about this is Ryan Berlin. Ryan is the senior economist with Rennie and joins us now via Skype with his outlook. Hello there. Hey, Rick, how are you? I'm fine, Ryan. Now, I must admit, I'm one of those that read the headlines and says, wow, the market has really slowed down in the lower mainland. Has the bubble burst? And you're saying, ain't necessarily so. Yeah, I've, I've never really looked at our market as being a, a bubble, maybe a balloon that's letting some air out. Um, and I think, yeah, I mean, 2018 was a year of, of normalization. Um, I think we can all agree that prices were increasing at an unsustainable rate. Um, it wasn't healthy for uh, anybody, um, sellers, buyers, or uh, the fabric of our communities. So I think we're in a better place actually entering 2019. We have balanced markets across the region. We have policies and regulatory changes and, and interest rates that have increased that are all baked into today's prices. Um, and so what I think that what that, that does is, is lay a path for increased certainty and confidence on the, on the part of consumers. Um, and so I see, I, I personally see a soft landing in 2019, particularly in the context uh, or against the backdrop, I should say, of interest rates that, you know, a few months ago, we all thought we're going up, up, up. Um, but, you know, the Federal Reserve today tells a very different story. And we may see actually no interest rate increases this year, maybe even a decline. When you say soft landing, what exactly do you mean? Well, last year we saw sales in the region decline by between 30 and 40 percent on a year-over-year -year basis. And we saw market conditions transition from favoring sellers to being balanced or favoring buyers. Uh, we saw inventories bloat. Um, I don't think we're going to see as much change this year. So that's what I mean by a soft landing, that I don't think that there's going to be a lot of directional changes. Uh, downward in particular. Um, you know, I'm looking for positive signs that might um, lead to increased activity. But as of right now, I think it's all at the margins. I think we might see some, um, you know, depending on what happens in today's by-election, uh, we, may, we may end the year with a different set of housing-related policies in this province that, are, that um, if it were a changing government, would likely be a little bit more uh, favorable to um, uh, a more efficient market existing overall um but again i think that you know all of the headwinds that have been buffeting our marketplace um are now accounted for in, in the current data and trends and, and so I, I think that there's some positives on the upside so then what are you looking for specifically how can the government help the situation by getting out of the way <laughs> <laughs> so i think you know i think i think it's 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 almost populist politics to be uh, implementing some of the measures that they have targeting foreign buyers. I mean, for the most part, these people aren't going to elect or unelect anyone. Um, and to the extent that foreign buyers have been contributing in a negative way to our market, whether it's more or it's less, um, you know, I think the general feeling by the electorate is, yeah, sure, tax them. Um, it's 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 other it's a form of otherism, um, and I think. The empty homes tax as well. If you listen to the provincial government's uh, commercials, radio commercials for the uh, speculation and vacancy tax, it's cheery music. They tell you it's only going to take 10 to 15 minutes to fill out your form. And by the way, only 1% of British Columbians are going to have to pay anyway. So um, at the same time, I'm wondering why I have to, why me and my spouse both have to report that we live in our home every year to avoid paying a tax. I mean, I don't think this is going to happen, but what's next? Are we going to fill out just a, a two-minute form to confirm that we're a, a man or a woman every year? I don't I don't know where this goes. And I, it, to me, it's a little bit of, of um, overreach and not necessary because I actually don't think that it alleviates any of the challenges that, that, that we're facing within the marketplace. Let's look at the specific year for 2019, what we're looking at this year when it comes to supply and demand. And, and you say we've got 
a lot of inventory on one in one area, but we're not building right now the right kind of housing for the expected demand over the years as immigration, as people come to the lower mainland to work, we don't have the right sort of housing available for them. What do you mean by that? I think oftentimes these conversations about the housing market, we, we really, all of us get down into the weeds and we start really sort of debating things that matter but aren't fundamental to the long-term viability of our, of our marketplace. And so what I mean by that is let's step all the way up and to the national level and talk about the new immigration targets that the federal government has um, implemented, whereby we will have 350,000 people being led into this country, moving here, immigrants, to Canada by 2021. And there's no reason to believe that there won't be 300, at least 350,000 each year after that as well. So you might say, oh yeah, okay, but they get dispersed across the country. Well, be BC accounts for 16% of all immigrants, and, and Metro Vancouver gets 9 out of 10 immigrants that come to BC. So having said all that, that basically means that, that Metro Vancouver gets 14% of all immigrants to Canada. So any changes to those federal immigration targets or numbers really impacts the number of people coming to this region, the number of people that need to be accommodated. And to me, given our economic conditions, given the appeal generally from a lifestyle perspective of this region, the political stability in BC and in Canada compared to some of our uh, trading partners. Um, you know, I think that puts us in good stead long term. In other words, we should expect that we're going to get 45 to 60,000 people a year to, to BC and about up, upwards of 45,000 people a year to Metro Vancouver. The real question then is how do we how do we house those people? How do we ensure that we're building enough homes? And that's the big, big issue in my mind. And are we? Well, we're currently not. Um, you know, the last couple of years, we've seen a ramp up in activity and, and starts activity, housing starts peaked in 2016 um, to what appears to be a sufficient level, but the starts data don't account for the fact that there's a lot of replacement of existing product in there. We tear down a single family home, we put up a new single family home. Well, that's no net new home. Or a single family home is torn down and we put up a duplex. It's only one additional home. So demolitions basically, when you account for those, they net down the Starks data by about 20%, which means that we're, we're just, as of 2016, just building enough in that year. But we've had seven out of the last 10 years where we, we haven't been building enough. And going forward, we're going to have to build even more. So, you know, I see things like, you know, the district of North Vancouver, um, you know, turning down um, or, 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 or nixing a couple of uh, developments that would have added much needed uh, multifamily accommodation in a couple of different neighborhoods because the projects weren't perfect. Uh, they were good, but not perfect. And, I, you know, that's not how, if we want to add housing, if we want to make it bring it anywhere near the realm of affordable, we, those projects at the very least have to be going ahead and, and many, many more. Do you see the lower mainland becoming more affordable? So this is what I always say in response to that. You know, I think we're an expensive market and to the extent that we're expensive because loopholes are being exploited, that foreign money is coming in illegally and, and feeding into prices and being laundered through casinos, sure, let's cut that off. But at the end of the day, we have an appealing region from a lifestyle perspective, from an access to Asia perspective, from an economic perspective. People want to live here. And so at the end of the day, we have a fixed land base and we have significant demand for housing. People say, you know, what does an affordable market look like? And I've said it a million times before. Yeah, it's, it's Detroit from 1940 until 1990. It's declining markets where you have people not wanting to live in a particular community. Prince George might fall into that um, uh, that category, or any resource town um, in BC where, you know, for example, mining operations like Tumbler Ridge, you close down the mine, and all of a sudden, um, you know, housing is affordable. So the question is, you know, how do we get to affordability? Um, I don't know if we want to go down the path that leads us to affordability on paper. I think we're always going to be more expensive, um, and, and that's going to be our reality. So working within that context, we still have to go back to the fundamental question of how do we house the pe people that come here. So finally then, Ryan, in, in one sentence, 
to the people listening and watching today, what do you say about housing in 2019? I see less pessimism and I see um, the beginning of a more stable um, marketplace uh, across the region uh, that is fair to both buyers and sellers. It's basically, it's returning to a period uh, that characterized this region uh, before the big run-up in prices in 2016. Which to many people is good news indeed. I would agree. Ryan, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rick.